Senator Barry Ward. Uh, Minister, I've had the privilege of visiting Israel on, I think, 14 or 15 occasions over the last 20 years. I remember the first time I visited, I actually got a bus from Tel Aviv to Cairo through Gaza City, through Rafa, Rafiach at the, at the border there uh, after the, the, during the Intifada. And the, it's so different. And it seems that we have travelled so far backwards since then. Um, and we have a situation where we as Irish people, to a certain extent, more than many countries, understand uh, conflict, understand different traditions and understand um, how, how people um, can hate each other in real terms. And I have seen, for example, I have been in Gaza City when sonic bombs were flown in by the Israeli Defence Forces, flying in at the speed of sound at low, at low altitudes, shattering windows, causing miscarriages, waking people up in the middle of the night and scaring the life out of them as they think they're actually being bombed when it's just a sonic bomb. I have equally had stones thrown at me in Hebron. But I have also sat around tables in West Jerusalem with uh, ordinary, decent Israeli citizens and broken bread with them on Shabbat. I have sat in settlements with uh, people I would consider less than decent citizens and argued to the toss with them in terms of their illegal occupation of Palestinian lands. Um, and I have stood in, in, in refugee camps in places like Nablus. So I have seen this from both sides. And there are, of course, parallels with our own, um, with our own troubles here on this island. And yet it is so far away from what we've experienced here. And I saw last week, or, or in recent days, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu suggesting that Palestinians actually celebrate when they're bombed because they can say now that the world community is going to come out and get behind them and the world community supports Palestine. Um, which to me demonstrates, first of all, a flippancy that is totally inappropriate for what's happening at the moment, but also an absolute lack of understanding of how the world sees this. If the world was behind Palestine, Israel would not be part of the international community. It would be relegated to a, a, a small part of the world that is subject to sanctions, and it isn't. Now, I don't think that's our fault. I think primarily it's the United States' fault, who continues to supply them with military aid, continues to supply them with, with, um, with, with trade and, and with investment. Um, but whatever about that, when the Israeli state comes out and says things like that, everybody's against us, it's so unfair, it's desperate how the world thinks about it, you'd have to ask the question, why on earth they think when they bomb media buildings in Gaza, when they bomb hospitals, when they bomb homes, when every time there's an outbreak of the conflict in this part of the world, the number and the proportion of casualties between the two sides is in the region of a factor of 10. Why they think that people wouldn't be appalled by their behaviour. And it's, it's not fair, and I don't think the answer is always to say how awful Israel is and how, how, how much they breach international law and, and, and behave in a way that is totally unreasonable. That's not always the answer. And yet, when you look at this situation, you have to say, without ever uh, taking sides, that all of the might is on one side, all of the, the military power is on one side, all of the responsibility, therefore, is also uh, to be borne by Israel. And when they react disproportionately, which is what they do time and time again, they spend the international capital because God knows there are communities in this country and throughout the world who want to support the Israeli state and the Jewish state and to support the right of Israel to exist. We all recognise that. But the problem is they spend that capital every time they fly bombs into Gaza with seconds warning for people to get out of buildings. And we can see the effect of that in the casualties that have come here. And I respect very deeply, Minister, your commitment to this issue and the fact that you have spoken strongly on this. We as a nation must do that. We as a nation must stand up to exactly these abuses. It, and it's not an anti-Israel thing. It is an anti-Israeli behaviour thing. And I speak to friends who are on both sides of this debate. And the people who are pro-Israel tell me I'm anti-Semitic to be as pro-Palestine as I am. I'm not anti-Semitic. So I'm an enormous fan of the Jewish nation. And I'm enormous fan. I have friends who live in Tel Aviv and Haifa and other cities in Israel who are Israeli and Jewish. But there is a distinction between those ordinary, decent people who don't support this activity and the Israeli Defence Forces and the Israeli state that continues to overstep the mark of reason, continues to go beyond what is proportionate and to spend its, its reputation to throw it down the drain. It's not anti-Semitic to oppose Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. It is not anti-Semitic to oppose the killing of innocents in places like Gaza. That is not anti-Semitic. That is reasonable. 
That is respecting our international obligations and our role as a member of the international community to call out exactly this kind of activity. I praise you for doing so, Minister. I hope you will continue to do so. And I will hope you will use our diplomatic might to do so at the highest levels throughout the world. Gormagat. Gormagat, Anisha.